If you're an anxious kind of person, I need you to keep watching. I don't know why people really aren't talking about how our attachment styles are the reason why we're actually breaking up. Everyone's talking about attachment styles, but we're probably breaking up with our partners or going into relationships immaturely because we don't know what our attachment style is. But before we begin, I want to say, hey, 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 Conscious Crew. Welcome back to the Conscious Creative Corner, where we are unpacking your trauma to heal your relationships. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist. Now, everyone's talking about attachment style this, attachment style this, or oh, I'm anxiously attached, or oh, I'm avoidant. But do we really understand what that means? Now, I'm guilty of it too, because if you watch my previous episodes, I talk about how bad boys or Moesha might have these attachment styles, but I realized I failed to give you guys the tea on what it really means. Let's start with attachment theory and what it really means. Attachment theory just states that if we grew up with a secure or insecure attachment to our caregivers, parents, that could be grandparents, maybe foster parents, it's going to show us how we connect with others in our environments, whether it be relationships with our friends, relationships with our coworkers or partners. Everyone really glosses over the very first attachment style, which is a secure attachment style. And so I want to tell you guys, security is possible. A secure attachment style just basically says that your caregiver met your needs as a child. They helped you understand and validate your emotions. They gave you that security you needed so that you know that if they left, they would be coming back to you. Oftentimes in our relationships, we don't see the security, but for those of us who do have security, kudos to y'all. Now the rest of us who might be struggling with security, we can understand that we're getting this premise from our childhood. Maybe when you were a child, the security wasn't there. Maybe your parents worked too much. Maybe grandma was too sick. These things happen in our communities and we don't really realize how it affects our relationships. Think about a baby who is just freely roaming around and they drop something on the floor. Some parents might react very anxiously, very angrily. A secure parent might validate like, oh no, you know, you made an accident, but it's okay. That information the baby hears from that secure parent who promoted the security in them, they're going to bring that into the rest of their relationships because they're going to know it's okay to make mistakes. They're going to know that there's another person on the end who's going to receive their mistake and validate them for it. That's pretty much what a secure relationship looks like. We are all striving to become secure individuals so that we can be in secure relationships because we're securely attached. I don't think people are telling us that we can move out of some of these attachment styles. And that's why I'm here to tell you that it's possible. And even the last attachment style that I'm about to talk about, you can move from it. Trust me. Now, the popular one that's always talked about is this anxious attachment style. What does this anxious attachment style mean? What does it mean for you? What does it mean for your relationships? So a person that is anxiously attached, it just means that they're inconsistent or they've been some inconsistencies in their growing up. They're brought up see as some would see. I don't know what I'm talking about. There's been some inconsistency in that parent-child relationship. Perhaps sometimes you get a parent that's super, super warm and then other times you get a parent that's really cold you never really know what you're gonna get. And so that child then thinks that they have to be super clingy to produce a result in their adult caregiver that's going to warrant a warm feeling or response. When we're thinking about this concept of trusting yourself and trusting others, this anxiously attached person has no trust in themselves, but they trust others, meaning that they're seeking a lot of validation in their caregivers, their partners. That securely attached person I talked about before, they have both trust in themselves and trust in others. And all of these attachment styles have a lot to do with trust. So this anxiously attached person, they don't have trust in themselves, but they really have trust in others. So maybe as an adult, that looks like you always want to be around your partner. You're trying to see what's happening. You're trying to essentially control it because you have a fear that this partner is going to leave you. And so a lot of the world is actually very anxiously attached, which tells me that some of our parents might have been emotionally immature at the time. Okay, that's fine, right? Because no one's perfect. I actually have an episode where we talk about emotionally immature parents and how to heal from them. So after this episode, make sure you go and watch that one because it's going to really help to put these things together. As a child, maybe your parent 
is leaving and sometimes they come home really, really upset and they take that aggression out on you. Or sometimes they come home and they are uh, really calm and tranquil with you. These are all the things that we're thinking about and recognizing when we're trying to identify what attachment style we are. We then become these anxiously attached adults uh, with our friends and our family. You always want to be important for your your friend or your family and so or family member and so you're doing things to make sure they are always around anxiously attached people sometimes come off as too abrasive which then straight uh, the other people just like uh-uh i can't do this they kind of st stave off those other folks okay. then we went into the avoidant attachment style what does this avoidant attachment style look like what does it mean and what does it mean for your relationships an avoidantly attached child looks very emotionally distant and that's because an emotionally distant parent taught them how to be that way right maybe you're a parent or caregiver would come home and there's no recognition of you it's just like oh i'm gonna walk by this child or perhaps this parent just seemed very uninterested in your life that child is now taking all of that in and thinking like, wow, what am I supposed to do? And so that child becomes very independent. They learn how to just live on their own. They learn how to not even get too emotionally attached. And I talk about this in my Bad Boys episode when we think about Will Smith's character, how he did not allow himself to get emotionally attached to um, these, these people because he was scared right? No one, I, again, I don't remember what his upbringing was like, but in that, in Bad Boys, Will was very emotionally unattached. He didn't really understand how to move away from um, just having these temporary relationships because he wanted to get in front of the problem. Again, as an adult now, if we are in these relationships and we're dealing with a person that is an avoidant attach or has an avoidant attachment style, we might see them cut off from like emotionally intense um, conversations because it becomes too much for them. Or we might see them do things like walking away and it's okay to walk away, right? Um, I always tell people have a, have a safe word, right? And so if you're in a relationship where this person just needs space, which is fine, you have a safe word. That safe word might be something that's unattached to the whole conversation but you use it every time because you guys have set some time aside to say hey every time i say snowflake it means i need to take a break right and i need to take this break in order to collect myself but i know that i'm coming back in 10 to 15 minutes and you guys as a unit decide what that safe word is and what that time frame is because an avoided person is going to be like yeah i'm not coming back i'm checked out Again, because I don't want to talk about these emotional things because I wasn't taught how to talk about these emotional things. Waiting emotional disturbances or emotional vulnerabilities is a avoidant best friend. They're going to always do it because it feels most comfortable for them because think about it. That's what they were doing as a child. Their parent, their caregiver didn't really say like, hey, Johnny, come let me talk about what happened today or what we are going to do tomorrow or ting on ting. They're not doing that. What they're doing is really creating space between each other, right? Because that parent is probably dealing with their own stuff and hasn't really figured out a way to integrate their child into it. And so that child is doing the same thing. If there's a conflict, I guess I'm going to figure it out on my own. I'm not going to talk to anybody because I didn't see my parents talk to me or have these healthy conversations with myself. Last attachment style here is the disorganized one. What is this disorganized attachment style? So some people actually don't even call it disorganized. I think they call it like anxious avoidant. And that's because an anxious avoidant person is low on trust for themselves and low on trust for others versus the avoidant who is trusting themselves, not trusting others versus the anxious who is trusting others and not trusting themselves, right? This last one here, this disorganized attachment style has trust in nobody, right? And that's why they mix it between the avoidant and the anxious because this particular person might have had trauma occur in their life 
that trauma that has occurred is now playing out in other areas of their life, right? And so becoming too attached to another person or attaching to themselves seems very scary. I don't know how to trust my own being or my own doing or somebody else's doing. Maybe they've witnessed trauma or they've heard about it vicariously and internalized all of that because vicarious trauma as well. Perhaps they've been in an abusive relationship with their caregiver right so that hot and cool all the time like on another level a lot of the times they associate you know any closeness with harmfulness because if a caregiver was harming them who they should have established trust with they no longer can have that trust and they've stripped it away this detachment style is very hard you know to deal with because it's a lot of inner work that has to be done first so even working on the unit might be deemed useless if this particular person isn't getting work done for themselves as well the vulnerability that is created in this disorganized attached person um, is there right because if you remember this disorganized attached person has both the anxious and the avoidant um, characteristics here. But the vulnerability is sparse sometimes because again, they don't know who they can be emotionally safe with. And sometimes they don't even, they can't even be emotionally safe with themselves. Sometimes with people who have this organized attachment, you can actually see them becoming other people sometimes, right? So they might disassociate from themselves. And sometimes they're like, hey, I'm really, really outgoing today. And tomorrow I'm like, hey, I'm afraid of people. All of these things are happening for them because they're trying to work through the trust issues they've had since childhood. So what does this mean, right? What does it mean? How do we solve these things? How do we help? How do we move into a securely attached category? And I would say a lot of times when my clients come through or in like these um, group sessions that we have we're realizing that we have to create boundaries in each of these domains domains as in boundaries for the avoidant attached boundaries for the anxiously attached boundaries for the disorganized attached because these boundaries are going to help us understand what's available when it comes to vulnerability and what's not available so for example an, an anxiously attached person who is like, hey, I want to be around my partner 24 seven and breed without me dip up under them and ting and ting. They need somebody that's going to understand the boundaries that they're going to put in place. For example, if I'm Trisha and Trisha's just like, yeah, I need to be around my man 24 seven. Well, what that means <laughs> is as her coach or her therapist, I'm going to tell her, look, Trisha, we need to put some boundaries in place so that you can feel a little bit in control, but you're not controlling someone else. Maybe you're giving your man some space and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're doing your own thing. Monday, Sunday, Saturday, you're with him, right? Putting clear cut boundaries in place that both your partner will receive and understand and vice versa. Without boundaries, that cleanliness is going to occur. And if you are with someone that is this anxiously attached person, and you're realizing like, yo, she's always up under me. I need some space. They might not come. They might not hear that. Well, but what you could say is, I need space to recharge because I enjoy being with you. But when I'm with you too much, I kind of lose my sense of self, and that's super important for me. So you see how those two messages are a little bit different. It's just the way in which we communicate it, and the way in which we're communicating the need for our boundaries. I might also tell Trisha again because Trisha is anxiously attached. Hey, can you realize the patterns that come up for you when you are becoming really clingy? Is it a sense that your partner is away for too long and you're realizing like, oh, this is a trigger for me? Because these triggers are things that also push us into this anxious space. Remember, as a child, you never know what you're going to get. And so let's say your partner leaves for two seconds. You don't know if he's coming back. You're just putting yourself back into that, that childlike space. This is why I say it's so important for us to do a full assessment of what has happened in our past and do some of that healing. Because a lot of times these, these anxiously attached, avoidant attached, these attachment styles come up is because we haven't done the work to do deep dives into what has happened to us as children or what has even happened to us in present day that we've just glossed over because we feel like it's okay. You know, feel we feel like it's normal. Oh yeah, I saw that car accident. Oh yeah, I saw my friend get, you know, um, hurt. Uh, it's normal, it's normal. It's, we're from the hood, it's normal. Well, no, it's not normal. It's just become normalized, but it doesn't make it healthy. 
we want to make sure we're making that differentiation between what's normal and what's healthy and what we can work on when it comes to this. So hopefully this episode has really shed some light and given you some information on how to move and proceed when it comes to attachment styles. Hopefully this episode gives you a little bit more insight on my other episodes when I talk about anxious attachment styles, avoidant attachment styles within, you know, pop culture or within um, our like cult classics. Um, when it comes to movies, shows, because I talk about this a lot, a lot because it's important. It's so important that I decided to even create something special for you guys. And before I release that though, I do want you guys to take a moment to see if you have your boundaries in check, right? By getting my free <laughs> red flags and green flags bliss. It's going to help you understand if your boundaries are too rigid or too loose when you're in your relationships. Because like I told you, all of these attachment styles need boundaries. Securely attached people have chef kiss boundaries. And I want you to get to that place. In order to get to that place, do a quick assessment. Use a checklist. Do the, do the free 15-minute workshop to see if you are where you need to be. And then after you do that, there is um, this video that pops up right here. Make sure you go ahead and watch it and send it to a friend. Matter of fact, send this video and the one that you didn't even watch to a friend because you know it's going to bless your life. You know it's going to be helpful. All right, y'all. Walk good. Keep the vibes high. And I will see you next time.